Oh, well, my name is Pro Alliance, and in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how to actually create something like that. As you may see, I've created a sequence of a car moving, and this is all done with path tracing, the latest technology introduced by Unreal Engine. So, of course, I'll do the step by step I'll show you. I've created this series of tutorials where I show you how I actually gonna create this kind of visualizations in Unreal, and I'll show you step by step on what things we need to do, where we can set up. Custom made modes by me, and uh, it's, there's going to be, a, of course, a link with Dropbox that will put all the models you need and the projects you sell. We can use it to run it, and of course, for this one, I, um, I'm going to show I'm going to show you guys on how to um, produce other bits of uh, lighting and what kind of settings you have to work with for the movie Ranger Q, and also how you want to set all up for you to start working. It. Um, so let's begin. So the next step here we'll do is actually try and make car move from one side of this tunnel into the other side of the tunnel, creating that motion blur. So in that instance what we do, we are actually gonna uh, go and uh, create some things. For example, we need to make sure the car is moving and we're gonna animate and sequence through. But then also what we'll do is to create a blueprint for the wheels to spin as it moves. And I'll show you how to do it very quick. Very simple. So let's actually do this first. So with the car, I go from um, through Busquit. I can get it. It's in the provided in the link below on this tutorial. Uh, so I can use any car. It doesn't matter. Really. So in that case, what I do is actually gonna create the tire. So what I actually did in this case, I brought the tire just like that. In. At first, I turn this into a blueprint. Pretty much like make sure it's a blueprint as it should be blueprint. So BP underscore tire. And make sure that it's actually harvest the components. Use all the components under the actor. Sculpt for this fade. And when I'm happy with this, I'm just gonna select. And I should have the blueprint open. Of course you see now it's there's a wheel but it has no more than just scale because there's no components called scene. For this, what we need to do is to actually add component, look for scene, and then let's make sure that that scene needs to move here. Of course, we need to make sure that we set the transformation back to zero. Now, the point of all this is to make sure this wheel spins naturally. So as it moves, so as it moves, it moves this way. So that all rolls with the x-axis. Um, yeah. So that means I need to do it now is actually uh, create a function where it's going to spin, spin the wheels. So let me just recall this wheel. And just do it that way. And drag and drop. And we're going to use indent tick, which means every second, a uh, frame will be at each second and moving uh, as it spin the wheel itself. So this one we need to do is to actually add relative. Um, rotation and I'm going to look for make transform make tra um, rotation make rotator and connect to this and now let's look for so if I drag it I look for float let's buy float and I'm pulling this to a roll there we go zero setup so it should be like so make sure that wheel is gonna spin quite fast so that case is zero so it's nothing gonna do what you can actually do is to set to like 500 so what i usually do is i usually set to say half to thousand so what's gonna happen there now is that when you hit play your 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 wheel is gonna spin that's where you want to get the nerves especially during animation so now when you're happy, you just want to place it right there. But because I have already uh, built set up for my example, um, and I will do the first things first, because at the moment, as you may see, the cars not being fully um, combined all together, because I literally I got just the, the body of the, the car. So what I'll do, I'm gonna part all these underneath, under all of this. So I'm gonna look for my car parts. And also what we can do is can add lights, just like I did with Spotlight here. Um, I'm gonna 
add them all this and drag them in literally pound them with my whole body of the car itself which is this one so that case instance for example what will happen will move that means I can use this to animate the car so let me move this one and move to the, my folder is car there you go so it's a lot less confusing let me close these ones I don't need those there we go so that's one and also keep in mind that when you create materials make sure you use automotive pack for the materials for the car paint you can actually find it very easily because it's free in the marketplace <clears throat> but one thing for sure some things like the glass or tires for example that all combine combination with material functions and the problem with path tracing uh, path tracing does not recognize material functions at the moment uh, so that case what it should do is to create it kind of fresh of the bat materials and that case what I did I literally created a separate material glass for this and this is what it looks like so so literally I got this combination here so this is my material for the glass you may just look at this what I've done I've created this opacity you know that did, and not the same thing I did for refraction and also I use the power so I can what you do is the uh, combination of all these further um, um, uh, mathematical as expressions I can all connect them under a further color function and all, all of them are connected to our um, nodes here inside the material attribute and of course make sure your know, material is that was set to translucent once you set this all up also keep an eye that you need to also set the lighting mode to surface translucent C volume uh, so once this is done, you have to do that. Once it's done, what you can actually do is to create a material instance just like that. And this is my material instance, and you can use these, of course, um, uh, parameters that I have created, or you can just basically expand it yourself. And yeah, there you go, this is your setup. So, next thing for sure that you want to do is to create a, a sequencer. And of course for this, when you do, because I already have my sequencer here. So what you want to do is actually go and create cinematic I love the sequencer. That's why I named this, just the way you want to. I am going to do this called um, Tutorial Sequencer. I create this, and then um, so now what you want to do, you create a camera. Don't use don't create from here, you can do it, it's just basically look for a camera because if you literally uh, create a camera inside a sequencer, it will be able having issues, we will have some issues with touching the uh, attaching the camera for the model because you need to bind it within the sequencer. But this will be the safe thing to do is to actually create a new camera from here. Drag and drop. Let's pilot this so we can see it through it. Let me just distance this from somewhere. Something like that, we do the job. Let's turn off our depth of field. Um, this one, we don't need that. And then, let's say we have to do that. Drag and drop. Now we can do, of course, we need to uh, power that with our car. So as it moves, the camera should be attached to that. There we go. So we need to try to do this, is this. And it's in nodes, so that's good. Now, what we do is to animate the camera and just basically place it anywhere if you want to. Okay, there we go. Connect that. There we go. There's the nodes, and we'll do that. And also, make sure your uh, car that is you select is the body, the main head of the parent. And you want to also animate the move in the car. So let me just move the, the backboard, something like that. And I'm gonna do is do this. Make sure you keep the transform. And as the car moves, it gets animated too. Let me just move like that. And maybe like that. It should be alright. So this is the this is the basic setup we can get for. So let's see what it's gonna be for 
as you see, the camera itself is there. But what if you want to create the shakiness of the camera? So what we can do is create the shakiness of the camera. And it gets where it's quite simple. What you need to do is actually create a blueprint for that. So to do that, let's go to our folder. Let's create a blueprint for this from specific flower and shape in the camera. And I'm gonna call look for blueprints. You need to touch from it, so it's, because it's rendering camera as well. So let me look for blueprint class. Go to camera shake. Um, that's the one here. And call BP camera shake. So, and what you can do is see now, nothing's happening. I mean, you can do is to close this and then reopen this again, and you should see all the options really available right here. So, what you want to actually do now is to look for the, compo the camera that it will shake. So, in that case, what I attempt to use is this one. It's apparently this camera shake pattern. Um, of course, what you see now these. So we should be able if you go back to your sequencer. Now what you can actually do is add this uh, camera shape again. Shake. There we go. And we just remove that. We don't need that. And I can say camera shape. So that's the uh, that's what you should have set up like this if you want to do something with camera shake. Um, so as you can see in this, let me try and add it to one. A bit too shaky. A bit way too shaky. Try to find some like a best point for you to actually work with this. So save it. Let's say I'm happy with that. Let's set this to our top tracing mode, so if you see this. And the next thing is definitely, once you have to do that salt mode, I can literally do is to check my post processing because we're actually going to work with our top tracer. For this, what I tend to actually use because I like to have quicker results when I top trace. If I set this max bounce to 20, make sure you enable these. Let's set for example so that's that stays stays five thousand, um, and I think the rest should be perfectly fine. Uh, next thing definitely is to actually go and look for movie render queue. So make sure you enable movie render queue as well. Um, and I'm looking for my shot as tutorial sequence, and of course for this I already created preset. So for this, let me find it for you. So for this. Make sure you have enable path tracer, disable different rendering. For this, I use PNGs. But you can also use the XR, it's up to you entirely. Um, for this one, I use my anti aliasing system. This is my setup 250. The reason why I did that because I want to be, should be able to set sample per pixel to a similar minimum number. And of course, for this, because I'm actually not using, because if you multiply 20 by 500, Gives you 10,000 because I set it to 5,000. I want to match this number with this. So, what I tend to do is to add this 10 and leave it to 500, or you can do either way around. You can keep it to 10 and this to 500. The reason why because you want to multiply and match the samples per pixel here as well. Um, and I think that's pretty much ready. You don't really need this. This is something I always have it, but this is something you can always ignore. So, you can always turn it off. Uh, and that's pretty much the setup. And uh, you want to render the frames you want to work with. So let's say I want to start from the ferry to maybe end at 70. So let's say this is my beginning is 30, the end is 70. Once I'm happy, uh, I want to look for location. Set your location, save it, accept it. 
Um, and then you're good to go. I just go over the middle of the pump, and that's pretty much it. This is the damage you're getting. This is my quick render. This is 30 frames. And keep in mind that the rendering time depends on the settings on your GPU, but usually it will take you as a per frame, maybe about five minutes long or 10. It depends on the settings and how the resolution is, but because I'm rendered this in 1080, so it's got quicker in that case. But, and so make sure this is what you're actually working with. And depending on your GPU, of course, you can uh, render a bit quicker than, or longer, uh, depending on your needs, of course, but this is something to remember. Uh, so there's, there you go. Is that quick tutorial on how I did it? So if you guys have any questions, please do uh, link me uh, or um, uh, drop me a line on the message below in the comments. I'd be happy to help and look forward for more to uh, doing some more tutorials for you guys. And have a nice evening and have a nice day and see you guys next time.